my dear YouTuber friends, I hope you're all keeping well. Welcome to this new video, which is part two, setting up controls for new players. New players to flight simulators, specifically flight simulator 2020. If you've not seen my first part, I'll link it in the top right for you. Go and watch that first. We set up basic flight controls, so left and right ailerons, up and down the elevator. We also set the throttle and some flaps and a landing gear. Very basic flight controls to get you up and flying. In this new video, I'm going to be taking a deeper dive. We're going to be talking and setting sensitivities for your flight controller and I'm going to be explaining in a basic way how they affect your aircraft and what you can do to make your aircraft feel better in flight. We're also going to be setting trim which is a fundamental control for aircraft that many new players overlook. So the first thing we'll do is go to sensitivities, set them up. So let's jump on to the PC. So here we are in Flight Simulator 2020. We're on our Logitech Attack 3 profile that we set up last time. Go and watch part one if you need to refresh your mem memory. We've set our ailerons, our left and right, our elevator, landing gear, flaps and brake. Just the simple basic flight controls. Now we're going to jump straight into sensitivity. So go up here to sensitivity, click on it, left click on it, and you'll see this screen, which can be highly daunting to new players especially, and even veteran players. We used to have just one sensitivity tab in each of the axis, and dead zone. Now we've got two sensitivity tabs, a dead zone and a neutral. Don't worry too much about this, I'm going to go through it one by one uh, with you. In our X axis, so that's our left and right movement of our joystick, we've got sensitivity minus and sensitivity plus. Let's concentrate on these first. Sensitivity minus is when you move your joystick left. So if I was to adjust, I'll talk about what these figures are in a moment, but if I was to adjust that uh, sensitivity minus, say to there, You'll see the curve has changed there. Likewise, if I was to adjust this sensitivity bar, our right movement, you will see that curve has now changed. <clears throat> what sensitivity is? With your joystick, if you're on zero sensitivity, like this is, because we set this joystick up from scratch, remember? So it didn't have any sensitivity setting set on it. When you move your joystick left and right, in this case, let's try and get that back to zero. When you move it left and right, in this case, there's no sensitivity set on that. So however easily or difficult your joystick moves left and, left and right, it's going to transfer to the aircraft like that. Now with sensitivity zero in each of these axes, so you've got left and right axis, up and down axis over here. With each of these sensitivity settings set to, set to zero. Let me show you some footage. The aircraft can feel incredibly toy-like. It doesn't feel realistic. Quite twitchy. Uh, not easy to control, particularly on the elevators, the up and down movement. With zero sensitivity, it doesn't really feel like a simulator. It feels more like an arcade game is the best way to describe it. So it doesn't transfer any re uh, realistic movements to your aircraft. <laughs> so coming back to the sensitivity, I've had a play around with this. I found the best setting for sensitivity left and right is minus 50. Now, by the way, if you move it to your right 
the tab to the right, you're making your joystick more sensitive. So in my case, which is already very sensitive, if I move that sensitivity setting to the right there, my left movement, in this case, is going to be over sensitive. Now it's going to be ridiculous. So what I want to do is move it to the left to the minus. As you see, when I get past zero here, it goes to minus sensitivity. I'm now making my movement less sensitive. So when I move, I found the sensitivity of minus 50 works on the ailerons, the left and right movement. So it, in this case, if I move my joystick left, the aircraft will take longer to respond to turn to the left. There's more resistance you will feel in your turning. And it just makes the whole thing feel more realistic. Likewise, because I've set my left sensitivity, sensitivity minus at minus 50, I want to do likewise to the right movement. Otherwise, I'll be turning left, okay, and I'll be oversensitive on the right movement. So set sensitivity plus to the same setting, ideally, unless you want some very quirky flight movements. So with sensitivity set to minus 50 on both left and right, this I feel is a good setting for me, for my ailerons, for moving left and right. You may want it less sensitive, so go more to the left, minus 60, minus 70, etc. If you want it more sensitive, obviously go toward, more towards zero, minus 40, minus 30, or whatever. But this I feel for me, is good with my particular joystick have a play around with that get a sense for what feels best for you likewise on my up and down movement sensitivity minus i believe is your down movement on your joystick on your y axis so if i move that to minus 30 you will see my down now is less sensitive and the curvature has changed in that picture so the plus is obviously when you're pulling back, when you're climbing on your joystick. Now I found with the Y axis, so your up and down axis, I found that a setting up minus 60, even more than the ailerons, the up and down on my joystick movement feels more sensitive. So I want to make it feel less sensitive. So I'm moving it away from zero. I'm making my joystick feel less sensitive. Or the aircraft will perform in a less sensitive way when I move my joystick up or down. Likewise, because I've set that to minus 60. Minus 60, come on. I want to do the same with my climb. When I pull my joystick down, my climb, I want to make that minus 60 as well. I hope this is clear enough. I'm trying to make it as clear and as, as simple as I possibly can. So making that minus 60 suits me in my flying uh, preference. I've got my Y axis, my up and down axis, less sensitive slightly than my left and right axis. My left and right feels okay at minus 50. I had to go a little bit further, make it less sensitive in the Y axis, my up and down axis. So that's what sensitivity and that's what these tabs do. If you have rudder pedals, you can set sensitivity on your rudder pedals or if you have a rudder on your joystick, you can set how sensitive you want the rudder to be. That's quite simple your left and right of your rudder. I don't have a rudder with this joystick, so I'm not going to bother with the Z axis. So now let... Oh, one other thing. You've got dead zone here as well. Now, dead zone... Basically, I'm sure a lot of you have heard about this on joysticks. It's basically how far... So if I move, if I move up and down here, how soon the joystick responds to me moving up and down. Is there a little dead zone in the center? So I've got to pull a little bit further down for it to climb. Or when I start pushing up to dive, I've got to push that little bit further before it starts responding. That's what your dead zone is. I found with the elevator, the up and down axis, a dead zone of one suits me. 
1%. You can make that higher so it takes longer to respawn before anything happens when you push up and down. But that 1% is just about right for me. Have a play around with these sensitivity settings. But let me show you some video footage now of how the aircraft behaves and responds with these sensitivity settings. As you can see, it's much smoother, less twitchy, less sensitive because I've adjusted those sensitivity settings to minus attributes. It just feels much smoother, much more like an aircraft. I would expect an aircraft to behave and respond to my joystick inputs. So there you go, that's my sensitivity settings. Neutral zone, I wouldn't worry about that at all. I don't really want to go into this in detail here because I want to make this simple. But basically, if you move this left and right, so put it in a positive or negative attribute away from zero, we're on the X axis here, your left and right, so your aircraft will start moving to the left or right depending which way you put this, even if you have your joystick centered. So my advice, unless you really want to delve into that yourself, leave your neutral at 0% and don't worry about it. Like I say, I don't want to go into it in this video because I want to make this a beginner's guide and as simple as possible. But those are the sensitivity settings. Those are the ones that suit me. And now we'll get on to trimming to complete this setup. Before I go into trimming, let's jump back to my joystick to consider what buttons we'll be using for trim up and trim down. So with this current joystick, the Logitech Attack 3, I only have a certain amount of buttons. Now ideally you'll be thinking, I've got two buttons here, I can use these for trim because I'm going to have my right hand on the joystick like this, on the actual... Uh, ailerons and elevator but because I don't have a hat switch you'll notice no hat switch ideally I want to save these for the viewing system which I'll show you in the next video and it's particularly handy if you don't have a hat switch then you know you've got buttons here I've got my hand on the controller anyway it's going to be ideal for view so I'm not going to use them for trim the only other buttons I've got if I switch hands my left hand's going to be free it's going to be available while my right hand's on the joystick. These two are ideal for trim. Trim nose down, trim nose up. So I'm going to be using these two buttons. So let's jump back to the PC and set this up. Okay, so now I've chosen what buttons I would like to use for my trimming. Let's get on with it. Something I didn't show on my previous part, when I set my sensitivities... A little box came up down here, go and check back in the video, apply and save. It's important to click on that to apply and save your settings. In this case, I changed sensitivity. So always apply and save. I did it off camera. But for yourself, when you change something and you want to keep it apply and save, it saves it to your profile. That's just an important step. So these are all the controls we have assigned. Go and check tutorial video number one if you need to refresh your memory. We've assigned all these. To get to see other controls we've not assigned yet, go to filter, click on the right arrow, change it to all and it shows this daunting screen again. Now these menus may be open or they may not be. Let's just open them because this may be what you'll be seeing if you come into this all setting filter all. So let's just open them all there. And you've got this very daunting settings. Hundreds of different settings you can use. You've got all these open typically as well. Hundreds of different settings that you can go through and change. Most flight simmers don't use 95% of these settings. There's a heck of a lot. If you wanted to go to town and set everything to a key press or joystick, if you've got many joysticks, <laughs> many buttons on your joysticks, then you go ahead. But most of us won't use most of it. So let's start hiding these menus that we won't be using. So I can left click on the main tab, miscellaneous, left click, 
it hides all those settings same as instruments we don't need that same for camera left click just hides it doesn't get rid of it it just hides the settings autopilot we don't need that left, left click on the main tab brakes we set up in video one we don't need any more of that so left click to hide it flight control services we set our ailerons and elevator we can left click on the sub section here primary flight controls because we do need to be in this main flight control services section but left click on the subsection to hide that we set them we set our flaps we don't need to do anything more in the secondary control services left click that and you've got this should be open then you've got control trimming services these are the ones we want to set specifically our elevator trim down so you're making the aircraft go down and elevator trim up you're trimming it to go up now I'm not gonna set I have only have so many buttons on my joystick as you saw so I'm not gonna bother with things like rudder trim or aileron trim that's left and right trim Typically, I don't ever use them anyway, even on my yoke system. I have aileron set on my yoke and I don't use it unless the aircraft gets a bit skew with and I really have to. But it's very rarely, very, very rarely that I use aileron trim. Elevator trim, I'm constantly using and it's probably the most used trim in an aircraft, certainly a light aircraft. So these are the ones we're going to set. A quick think, uh, a quick lesson on what trimming does then. So if you're flying along without trim, let me just show you some footage. As you're moving up and down or left and right, up and down in particular, if you don't have trim set, it's difficult to get your aircraft into a level flight. When you come into landing in particular, this can be very hair raising without trim and you're putting a heck of a lot of work in to get your aircraft to the right altitude for landing. It can just be very, very messy without trim. What trimming does, if you have a button or lever set to it or even better, a trim wheel, it's moving your nose in, in, in in, in this case for the elevator moving your nose up and down slightly and that's making your of, of your aircraft and that's making your aircraft trim down or up so if you're going at an altitude that's slightly rising and you don't want to you want to get into level flight then you would use trim down trim the nose down slightly to put your aircraft in level flight in level flight likewise if you come into landing your your aircraft's position downward too much it's it's descending too much you can use trim up to trim it so it's going back so it's not descending as much it's very handy control to use to get your aircraft like i say in a straight and level flight so you're not constantly having to adjust the throttle or your elevator itself your up and down movements of your joystick to get yourself in a position where you want to be 99 percent of the time when i'm flying i don't use my elevator my up and down only when it comes to floating over the runway will i use my actual joystick or yoke elevator i actually 95 percent of the time use trim to get my uh, aircraft into specifically an altitude or set altitude set angle that I want it to be in it's it's the trimming I would use the most that's why it's incredibly useful to learn especially if you're a beginner pilot so let's not procrastinate over that too much let's set these buttons up so trim down now like your elevator when you move your joystick up you're making the aircraft down when you're when you pull your joystick back you're making it rise we're going to set the trim in the same position so to trim down i will use the top button i showed you before left click in the box here start scanning left click there and i'll press that top button that i showed you previously 
And that will be setting my aircraft to trim down and validate that. To trim up, obviously left click in the box here, left click on start scanning. I use the bottom button on my joystick I showed you before, which is button 7 in this case, and validate. And as simple as that, I've got my trim set now, my elevator trim down, elevator trim nose up, set to two buttons on my joystick, and it's going to make controlling my aircraft so much easier. Seriously, if you haven't tried trim yet, give it a try. Set a couple of buttons, these two buttons, or a lever, or if you have a trim wheel, you can actually set the uh, elevator axis for that. If you're using buttons like I am, or a little uh, rocker switch, if you have a yoke system, set it and use it. You will find yourself using trim a heck of a lot, and it just makes your uh, flights in general a whole lot more controllable and a whole lot more fun. So now, with my trim settings applied, obviously click Apply and Save, and that's saved it to my profile. With my trim settings set, and my sensitivity set. Let's get into an aircraft and show you what a world of difference these settings make. Okay, so I've got myself flying over my test base, London City, with the Orbit's London Landmarks package. Let's test the sensitivity. I'm just flying, moving left and right feels much more natural, progressive, smoother. Let's go down, it feels much less twitchy, much less instant, there's a bit of resistance there, and it just feels like an aircraft would behave, what I imagine this aircraft would behave like if I flew it. No sudden movements, it, sm it goes left and right smoothly and up and down smoothly, absolutely ideal. Now trim. Let's concentrate on trim. I'm basically, looks like I'm slightly descending there. What am I? Do I have it in level flight? Looks like it's slightly descending. So if I trim up a little bit, I can get my aircraft to straight on level flight. It's pretty much straight on level flight there. In fact, I don't need to do much trimming. But we are now going to be approaching the airport, London City Airport coming up on our right behind the Canary Wharf there. If you've seen my videos before, you know I always use this airport and this landing as a test. So we're going to set ourselves up to land. I'm going to click the first stage, set the first stage of flaps. So flaps one. When I do that, the nose of the aircraft wants to rise because there's wind rushing under those flaps and it's rising the nose of the aircraft. So I'm using my trimming buttons first to nose down, get the aircraft going down again, and then trimming up to get back into level flight or a configuration that's ideal for landing. I go flaps two to show you that again. Nose of the aircraft wants to rise. I'm trimming down not using my physical joystick up or down, I'm trimming. Like I said, trimming is something I'll use mainly rather than using the physical joystick to move up or down. It's just a lot easier to control this way. So I'm just clicking up and down on my trims until I get into a position and angle which I feel is good for landing. I won't bring out my landing gear right yet because We've still got some distance to the runway. I will slow down a little bit. You should see the nose of my aircraft start to drop. If you decrease your throttle, there's less wind moving over the wings. And it just means you're going to start descending or your nose will drop. And you will start to descend. So there you go. i got my speed coming down slightly. Maybe a little bit more. Let's bring out our landing gear. So I'll press the button on my joystick. Go to external view to make sure my landing gear is coming out. It is. Once again, it's creating drag, so the nose of your aircraft will want to drop. Your altitude will start dropping. Trim up a little bit to get it back into a position, which is or an angle, which is good for landing. Airspeed's coming down. The airspeed's on the left here, of course. If I get it around 60, it's ideal. So I might just start 
reducing my throttle slightly. No great big leaps on reducing the throttle because I don't want to stall the aircraft. Giving myself plenty of time to line up with the runway. See the O2 beside us there, beautiful view. Trimming up, constantly trimming, rather than using the physical joystick, like I said, you get used to trimming and you'll find you'll have much more finesse and control in controlling your altitude, especially. It's what pilots would use all the time to get their aircraft into an ideal trimming, into an ideal angle uh, when it comes into landing or general level flight. So it's ideal that you get used to trim and use it more than you would actually uh, the physical elevator, the up or down movement on your joystick. Lots of time here, maybe a little bit more speed shaved off. Not too much because like I said, otherwise we'll end up stalling. Can never seem to line up with runways. I'm so used to playing in virtual reality with aircraft. Much easier. Always have trouble with light aircraft get hitting the center line of runways, but I'm sure a lot of newer players will have this trouble as well. That's not too bad though. Now I definitely don't want to touch my throttle here, otherwise I will be stalling the aircraft. It's an ideal height, it's an ideal speed. I'm just using my trim because it wants to de descend quicker than I want it to. Once we hit the tarmac, or fly over the tarmac, I'll know my throttle. Now I'll use my physical elevator to control my uh, rate of descent, just so I smoothly, hopefully... Come on down, you come. I'm just floating. This is what I call floating. And in fact, that was so smooth, I didn't feel it touch down. Not bad at all. So there you go. That's the effects of sensitivity and trim on your flight controller. So there you go, that's lesson two completed. Integral that you set your sensitivity for your joystick so it feels better when you're flying. And like I said, trim, get used to it if you're not using it. Don't feel put off or frightened by it. You're gonna find that if you have trim, it's gonna make controlling your aircraft so much easier, particularly when you're coming into landing so much easier. Set a couple of buttons and use it is definitely my advice. So there you go. Let me know your thoughts on this video. Leave your comments below. Give the video a like if you liked it. Subscribe for more. I'm gonna be making another video in this uh, tutorial set of videos. Subscribe for more and I'll see you soon.